Hello, this is Randy with Excel for Freelancers and welcome to the Limited Access Workbook. In this week, I'm going to show you how you can create your own fully automated licensing system for any Excel workbook, any customer around the world, simply and easily. It's going to be an incredible training. I cannot wait. So let's get started. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I've got a really fantastic and very highly requested application this week, the Limited Access Workbook. You're gonna be able to create your own Excel applications as we've been teaching and then license those applications, having those licenses expire, creating multiple licenses and being able to quickly and easily add this type of licensing code and pop up to any application. I'm gonna show you how to do all that and more. I do appreciate you sticking with us on these trainings. I hope you'll watch the entire training. There are tons of nuggets of brand new information in this training, so make sure you watch the entire training. I do appreciate that. I don't ask for much. In fact, this template is absolutely free. All you need to do is click the links down below, either with your email or Facebook Messenger, and we'll get that sent over to you. Of course, if you do like this training and you do like this free content, I do hope you will uh, appreciate and of course support us as any way you can. There are many ways to support us. One is with our incredible workbook pack. We've got 200 of my best templates available for you for a very low price, right? And we can also include the optional PDF code books, which give you the amazing way to view the code. And of course, you can highlight the code, you can look at it, it's color coded, it's perfectly organized, it comes with a table of contents, and of course, it's got a great index. So PDF code books, a great way to learn, and that comes with our 200 workbook pack. So I hope you'll pick that up. Also with our Patreon platform, another great way, I'll be taking your ideas, your comments, your feature requests, and putting them in every single week on every single workbook, right? So if you've got some ideas you want, or maybe you want to fix, or maybe you want me to focus on a specific area, I'm doing all that on our Patreon platform. I'll give you the links down below. I've created additional dashboards, automation emails, tons of great features get added to these templates even after the YouTube training. And that's going to happen all on our Patreon platform. That and a whole lot more such as PDF codebooks, you'll get early access, early access to deals, tons of great benefits on our Patreon. All right, let's get started on this training. Basically, when we create these applications as they do each and every week, we wanna make them secure. And a great way to do that is with a licensing system. This week, I'm gonna show you how to create your own licensing system you can use with any workbook for absolutely free, right? It's a great way to do it. And of course, there's many features and ability. And basically, what we want to do is we wanna do a few different things. I want to create, to be able to to send my users a license number, have them register that application, and then have them be able to use that based on expiration date. Maybe that expiration date is gonna be in for two months, or maybe it's gonna be for one year, or maybe it's gonna never expire. Maybe it won't expire, right? So there's a lot of things I wanna do. I wanna be able to track customers. I wanna know uh, if they've, how many opens they've had, if we wanna do that. I wanna know the status of a license. Is it pending? Is it registered, expired, or has it been deleted? I wanna know an email address, so who's getting those licenses, and a lot more more and this is going to actually help us do that of course when we have a lot of license we may want to filter them so we can do that here just simply we'll be adding an automated filter in there and a whole lot more so it's a great training and i want you to stick with us on this of course we're going to be able to refresh the license data and that means as we send out our applications i want to know who's licensed and who's not i want to know that information if there's license have been added or updated my customers out there anywhere in the world if they're licensing my application i want to know that and i want that information to automatically come back in here and also, sometimes what we do is we give free versions, right? We may give a lockdown version that's free, and we want them to be able to license that free version. So we can do that. We can give a fully secured free version. Maybe it's got limited functionality, and maybe we, or maybe we only want it active for 30 days. So you can give out your application you know, completely free. When they activate it, when they register it, it's only available for however long you decide, whether it's 30 days or whether it is one month, you know, one year, or whatever it is, or maybe it's just 10 days days. We can set that. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So that after that period of time, that application gets locked until they actually upgrade or purchase your real version. So lots of great benefits that we're going to go over in this. And there's a lot of room for growth too. So I'm going to give you a lot of ideas, things that you might want to implement. So let's go ahead and go over the overview of this. This is a relatively simple application. There's not a whole lot going on and that's on purpose, right? I want to keep it very, very simple. So this application kind of has two parts, right? There's this 
part that controls all the licensing. And then there's the second part that you would implement inside an application, and I'm going to show you. Basically, that has a start screen. So every uh, application that you want to implement this licensing would have a start screen. And if you register the application and it's registered and you send those details, it's going to send those details. And if it's not registered or doesn't register, it's going to say this registration has expired. Please purchase or upgrade for a new one. And that's exactly what we want, right? We don't want to allow it. However, in our application, what we can do, let's take a look at this, Barry. We see that it's expired on, you know, it's going to be expired if we save this license, right? And I expired today is, you know, our uh, actually May. So we this is fine, right? We're on May 6th. So if I save this licensing and now this license until 2020, obviously that's not going to work, right? So 2020. So let's update that. All I need to do is just make a change to this year and it's going to automatically update that, right? To May 6th, right? So now it's in the future. So if I save that license, right? It's going to automatically get recorded. Now on the client's end, all he needs to do, let's say they've paid for their license and you've updated this information. Now they have one year from the registration. They've registered it. So now all they need to do is simply go and notice the license number is the same. All they need to do is go into their workbook, try that again, register it. They'll put in their registration, their name, and it's already in here. Send those details. It's now going to be registered automatically, has been successfully registered. Notice May 6 until 2023. This is the client copy. Click OK. The, uh, the workbook opens up and everything's ready to go. That's a great way to do it. So that's how we're going to do it. I'm going to show you every single step. So don't worry. We're going to get to get your beverage of choice and we're going to get started right away. So inside our basic, our licensing workbook, our limited access workbook, this controls everything, right? We have all of our clients, our license keys. We can automate, generate automated license keys. We've got a very small admin and defaults. When our customers or end users license those applications or license whether they're the free or registered versions, we want that information to come in somewhere. Well, we got to put a folder and we want a text document. That information is going to come in a TXT document. And we need to browse this folder and we need to look for anything that's going to come in and we're going to take that information and put it inside our database. So we need to know what folder our data is going to be located in. It's going to be a Dropbox folder. It's got to be shared. So Dropbox is a great way. You could try using other shared folders. I personally prefer Dropbox. It's fast, it's easy, and it works every single time. Okay, we're also going to assign some dynamic license status so you can update your license, whatever you want. We got new license default details. For example, when you create a brand new license, if I create a new license here, I, want, I may want some defaults. I may want a default application. I may want some default expire days. When should it expire? And when's it going to expire? So if I create a brand new license, and maybe I create a username, like let's say Teresa, and I want to create that, all I need to do is just simply and just save that license. It's now created a license for Teresa. We can now give this license to Teresa, and her application will be good for a single month, right? And as soon as she registers, it, it'll put in the registration date. So we could do it from today, or maybe we want to register it from when she registers it, right? So if I do from registration, right? If I decide that, that's going to clear the expires on it. It's going to be based on when she actually registers it. So if I save that license, it's going to get rid of that expiration date. So it's going to be based on whenever she registers it. So we can decide when we're going to, when that expiration date, if it's from the registration, we don't know the expires on until she actually registers. It. All right. So we have that. So we've got some defaults, right? For new license default, I want it non-expiring, right? We can make uh, users expiring and non-expiring. I'll fix that. It should be expiring. We want those defaults to be expiring. And we're going to set that to expiring. And then I want to expire quantity 30 days from today. Maybe I'm going to put from the first open or from today. But what I really want, let's go ahead and copy this. I really want these two. I'm going to copy that data validation because I was doing some tests. I'd, br I'd rather have this, and then we're going to paste the validation. So I want these two exactly the same as we have it on here. So it's going to either be from today or from the registration. We're going to set it to registration. And then what I want to do is I want, if there's a specific application, right, we can have multiple applications, as many as you want, really. And then um, that way we can track different applications. And I also want to know the cell that it's connected to, right? The cell that is connected to, we can use data mapping on that. Okay, I'll show you how that's done. If, I, if I've completed that, if I haven't, we'll do it together. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, so then we're basically going to store all this in a very, very simple database here. So it's just three parts of this application. We've got our license key, the status, the application, username, email, the registration date, if there is any, the licensing type, right? This licensing type is simply based on an option right here. So expiring would be one, non-expiring would be two that's going to be stored right here in this license type. So this option group 
is connected to B8. So as we change this, we'll see that goes from one or two. That's how we get this one or two here, right? So if I were to change, if I were to create something, let's say Barry, I decide we're going to make him non-expiring, right? And we're going to save that license, right? It becomes two in the license database. So we need now see Barry has been set to two. So it's non-expiring. That means it doesn't ever, never expire. We have how what's the frequency of the quantity right one year 130 days whatever and then the expire frequency type there months days years or whatever and then we have the from right is it from today from registration date or a few other things and as expire date and then the number of opens if i want to know how many times they've opened their application we can set it here that's going to help us if we get something that's been overused that'll let us know right there all right great so we're going to have that along with a filtering or we may want to filter out certain things we may want to only see the those active licenses, right, we can clear that filter out with this or a specific registration date. If we want to know, uh, let's say, greater than uh, 5122, right, we can do these types of filters inside here, which is really helpful. Just by putting in the proper date format, it's going to automatically filter that. We can do the same thing with number open and then user email. So we've got a cool filter here, relatively simple. I'll get into that. And a license database. That's all there is as far as the, our licensing. Now with our client version, right, all we have here is pretty much a few things. I've got a start screen here, which you'll want to implement. So when I give you this application, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you this application here, but I'm going to include this, the start screen here. All you need to do, in fact, let me do that now, right? So what I want to do is I want to make sure that you get everything. So all I need to do is just go into this start screen. I'm going to then, sorry, it's off the screen. I'm going to copy or duplicate the sheet. I'll move this up here so you can see it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this up here and then I'm just gonna right click. I'm going to move or copy that. And then what I wanna do is I wanna copy it directly into the workbook available for you. So I'm going to do limited access workbook and I'm gonna move it to the end. And I'm just gonna create a copy here. And that's gonna create that copy. So now we have the start screen. You, you will wanna customize this. Obviously it wouldn't be, let's just put your workbook name or whatever your start screen can be whatever it is you know whatever you want it to be put a logo here so you'll click in here so you'll drag this sheet into your application and also what you want to do is you'll also want to make sure you drag in of course create that uh, pop-up so this pop-up now we also have a pop-up as you noticed here's the code we'll show you that in a second so inside our warehouse manager i've got a little pop-up this particular pop-up this User form is very simple. It's got a license key. We can have a new registration or we have a license key. So we're gonna have that. If it's a new registration, a license key can be automatically generated, which is very helpful. And I'll show you how to do that. All right, so let's get into it. So all we have inside our client application is a start screen. We've got some information here in columns A and B. You wanna make sure that these are hidden and locked, right? You can't give a user access. Hide those, lock the worksheet, right? Protect the worksheet under the review here. Make sure that we protect the sheet. So we've got that and of course with a password, that way they will not be able to access any information on columns A and B where our licensing information. So let's say you're gonna be releasing your application. Of course, you won't have any of your user information in it. You won't have any opens in there. So you'll release it something like, and no license key. Okay, so it'll be all cleared out. You could do a status, let's do pending. Okay, so you might wanna release it in this condition, giving it a status and giving it an application name. That is it. So the user will not see that. Of course, that'll be hidden and locked down. So they will see this screen. They'll simply go to register their application and of course, it's gonna be a new, right? They don't have a license key yet. Maybe you give them a free version and they don't have it. So they wanna do new registration. It's gonna sign an automatic license to them, right? They'll give it, a, they'll give it a, uh, their own name. So let's go Jim Johnson, Johnson, and they'll put their email down. And so this way they can automatically register their free version. And let's say Jim, James, Jim, gmail.com. Okay, so we're good to go on the email. And so we're gonna send those details. This allows us to create a free version, a limited access free version if we want. We're gonna send those details it's going to automatically register that application your application has been ses successfully registered until june 5th it's going to give them 30 days you can preset that for any amount of time their registration is now automatically cleared so now this application is open it's ready to go for the next 30 days if we take a look inside our own workbook now this is it here's our license application right and now what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to refresh the license data and we see that we have two licenses have been updated or added and we see that brand new one jim johnson here 
The one that we just created is automatically, we know that they've registered it, they have one month, they have one open, and everything comes in automatically into our application very easily. So we know that they've just registered it, we know they've given 30 days, and then maybe we can send them an email in 30 days saying, hey, if you like your application, maybe you wanna buy it. And if we do, they say, yeah, yeah, I really do, they, they pay for it. We can do two things. We can create a brand new license for them with new expiration date, or we can take their existing license and we can automatically just reset it back to, let's say maybe we wanna give them one year or maybe it's non-expiring. We can just do that, save it, and automatically at the end of the 30 days, they're gonna be able to register it, their application automatically, even using the same license number. Great, so you kind of get the idea of it. And what we'll do is I'll make sure inside this limited access workbook that you also get this user form here that you saw that user form back into the start screen here. And that's this one right here. Okay, so that's gonna be available to you in the workbook and the start screen. You'll take this user form and you'll take this start screen and you'll put it on any workbook along with a little bit of code. So how are we gonna make this happen? Well, that's gonna be through VBA, of course, a little bit of VBA and just a few lines of code, right? Right, Sammy? And we're gonna continue on. So first thing I wanna do is be able to create new license, save license, delete license, or I wanna refresh that license data. Refreshing the license data, what that's going to do is any of our users that have made any changes to their license, whether they've registered, whether it's expired or anything like that, it's gonna come into our application automatically. All right, so we understand we've got the admin defaults. This is relatively simple. We've got a database, we have a start screen. This will only be used in your external. You'll drag, you'll copy this into your applications. That's what the start screens. And so that's it. All right, so first thing what I wanna do is I'm gonna show you how we're gonna create this screen and how we're gonna get that ability. Just a few macros to do that. We're gonna do that through VBA, which you saw briefly. Alt F11 or the developer, and then of course Visual Basic will get you there. First thing, I've got a few different modules. As you can see, I have a few diff two different workbooks open. I've got the Warehouse Manager here open, and I've got also our Limited Access Workbook open here. So I've got these two workbooks open. We're just gonna be focusing right now on our Limited Access Workbook, and we've got a few modules. I've got application modules, I've got license macros, and this user registration macro. Those are the three modules that we're gonna be going over. As far as the license macros, that's what we're gonna focus on first. These are the ones that create a new license, and we're gonna work on that. So as you notice, when we create a brand new license, we're gonna do set some defaults, and we're gonna bring that through that, and I'll go ahead and show you how that's done. First thing, what I want to do is show you some variables we've got the license row we need to know what database row the column we're going to use data mapping on that column and basically what that means is we're going to map these particular cells here e4 with the username we're going to imagine k4 with the status and i want those mapped to their individual columns notice here username e4 right the status here k4 so we're mapping this in row one that's going to help us quickly do two things one it's going to help us save the data to this table and it's also going to help you quickly load the data once a user clicks on a selected license or user that information is going to load up in the table above okay so that's how we're going to do it now we have some hidden column here that we have just i want to know if the license is being loaded when we load it's going to quickly go to true and back to false we have a selected ID. I want to know what the license ID. I have a database row. I want to know what row associated the database row that this particular license is associated on. And that's right here inside the lesson. So I know that this particular one for Fred Fredders is pending and it is for the contact manager. So I want to know what row that is. The license ending in 96073. So I want to know that that's on row four. So we see 96073 and it's on row four. To do that, we're going to start out with a named range, a dynamic named range called license key. So if we go into the formulas, name manager, and we see that we have one license key using the offset. And basically we're going to use the offset from the header row. Then we're going to go one row down because we want to exclude the header row. That's important because when we have no data, it could create an error. So we always want to include the header row, but exclude it in the counting. Then we're going to simply count all of the rows, including the header row, and then subtracting one. That's an offset dynamic named range that are going to encompass all the license keys. So what I want to do is I want to figure out what row based on the selected license. So when I look into license users, and I see we're going to wrap it around if error, we're matching the license key on B3, and we're looking in the license key. And then when it's found, we are going to simply add 
three to that because if it's found, it's going to return one. But I want it to return four because I want that row four number. The reason for that is because our first one starts on row four. If you've been following me, you understand that. I want a brand new I key. This is brand new. How do I create a brand new automated license key? Well, the best way to do that is we're going to use ran between. We can use ran between. First, we're going to start out ran between. And I want to start it out with between zero and this really large number here. And then I want eight characters of that. And then the reason is, so once I have that here, this rand between here, then what I want to do is determine, I want the dex. I want the decimal to hex, decimal to hex, DEC to hex. And that's going to create a alpha numeric string that can close both numbers and letters and a random one at that. That's going to help us create a very unique license key using the DEC to hex, okay? Wrapping that around RAM between this creates the random number, this creates a decimal to hex automated string here. So that every time notice that it changes every time which is fine, every time the worksheet calculate it changes and that's exactly what I want. So what we're going to do is when we have a brand new license key, we're going to take whatever that is and we're going to place it directly inside B3. B3 is where it's going to be placed. We have a link here. This is linked to B3, so this is simply for display purposes only. Whatever's in B3, when we save that new license number, it is that new license number that's going to be automatically saved in the database. So we're going to generate that using this formula. And when I select a specific row, I want to know that selected row here. Notice that our conditional formatting automatically triggers, and it is based on whatever is in B6. So if I highlight that, we're going to see three different conditional formatting. So when I manage those rules, we're going to take a look at that. Two of them are going to deal with the row numbers, odd or even, and one's going to be based on the selected row. That selected row is going to be based on B6, and we're going to simply give it that dark green background with a bold white font. Then what I want to do is I want to highlight rows, but only rows with data. And so there's two conditions. One, column D must contain data, and two, it must be for odd rows. So for those odd rows, I'm going to color it that light green and give it a light border. For even rows, even is mod of row two equals zero. Those are even rows. I'm going to give it that white background and I'm simply going to give it the green border. And that's how we get that alternating row automatically as so as soon as we add data here, it's just going to automatically uh, create that. So very, very simply based on column D. Okay, so that's a conditional formatting. So we also have the license type. Now I showed you this before, we have expiring and non-expiring. So we have those two. And also I've used some text boxes here. So if we take a look at that, we see that our option here is without text. And that's because I wanted to create some text boxes so that I can get the right font size. So I've done that and I've created an option group here. And if we right click here, we format control and we see that it is basically tied to B8. B8 is going to either be one or two based on that license type non-expiring or expiring. Now we take a look, I do have some conditional formatting here. Notice that when it says never expires or expires in, right? So we have a difference, so non-expiring. So I've got a little formula here in H8, and that's gonna be based on whatever is in BA, whether it's one or two. If it's one, we know it's gonna be expiring, so it's gonna say expires in. However, if it's not one, then it means two. It's going to be called never expires. So that's just a formula based on what's in here. And I've got some conditional formatting here that's also going to be based on the same B8. So if we manage the rules there, we see that we've got two rules, right? So the first one, we're going to say if B8 equals two, we're going to give it this green background. If B8 equals two, also this one, I'm going to remove some of those borders. So if we take a look inside the borders here, bring this down, taking a look inside the borders, we see that the left and right borders have been removed on that and cleared out. And that's just going to be so that we don't have any borders when it's going to be at one solving. However, if we click expiring, we see we've got two borders in here. So that is all we need to do for that. Very cool. All right, so let's go back into that. So let's start out with our first macro, which is new license. When we new license, what I want to do is I want to make sure that we create automatically here this particular defaults, right? I want the, the default based on that. Notice we have the default. It says contact manager, right? If I change this to employee manager, right, and I click new license, this is going to automatically change to employee. So these defaults are going to be based on that. And we're going to do that through a single macro. First thing we're going to do inside this macro that's tied to that button, we need to know the default row as long. And then we're going to focus on the license. We're simply going to clear out the contents of all the cells. 
And now what I want to do is I want to set some defaults. And I've got to fix this one default probably because that's not really. So the first thing what I want to do is go from 7 all the way to 12. 7 to 12, those are the rows. Those are our defaults. And I want to basically, inside K4, I want to put pending. Inside B7, I want to put expiring. And this one inside this and this. So that's basically on that. So actually B7, this one, I got to change a little bit. So that's the only one. If you know B7 expiring, tab expiring. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that it's set here to one. Great. So because that way it doesn't quite work just yet. So if it's non-expiring, it will in a moment though. If it's non-expiring, notice license users, right? If I need new license, it doesn't change. It should change to non-expiring. So we're going to do that right now. All we need to do is just do an if it equals non-expiring, then simply change this to one or two. So let's do that. So all we're going to do is simply loop through those rules. And if there's any issue, we're going to simply go on and resume next. So what we're going to do is we're going to take F and the default row value. This is the range. The range is in column F of the admin screen and the default row, right? If we take a look at column F, F contains our cells, K4. B7, B8. These are all the cells where we want to place these dates. So we're going to loop simply from 7 to 12 to do that. And then also we're going to place, what are we placing in that cell? We're going to place whatever's in location E, that, that column E and the default row. So we're placing in whatever is in here. Lastly, all we need to do is just the, the first thing is if this is non-expiring, change this to 2. If it is expiring, change this to 1. So that's all we have to do in the last line. So let's go ahead and do that right now. So if dot range B7 dot value equals and then non, let's do non expiring, then dot range B8 equals 2. Otherwise equals 1 equals 2. Okay, so we're just going to copy this and then change it to 1 under the else, right? So else B7 equals 1. Okay, so that should be sufficient. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. And then we'll do new license and we'll see it changes to non-expiring. Okay, we'll change the defaults back here. Now we're going to change it to expiring and we'll leave it at that expiring. And then we'll go back to new license and change back to expiring. Perfect. Okay, the last line of code, I want to set that initial license ID. Remember, our formula in here is going to take care of that automated license ID right here in B5. So I want to take whatever's in B5. I'm going to place it directly inside B3. I want to take that automated and place it here because here it is no longer being calculated. It won't be changed taking the value. Here it's going to continually change until we place it into B3. So we're going to take that put it whatever's in B5 and place it into B3. That's going to set that initial license ID. Okay, very good. Now you'll notice another thing as soon as we made a change to here, so if we change this to, let's say, two months, right? That automatically here is going to change it. Let's go ahead and put the expiring here. So now you see it's actually, we'll set it actually from the registration. Let's go ahead and put this to from today, right? So if we set it to a current day, right? We know that at the current day, today, of course, is recording day of May 6, 2022. So we see that two months is going to be July 6. If we change it to one month, it's going to be June 6. If we change this to one year, it's going to be set one year. All right. So we see from the current day. Now, of course, if it's from based on the registration day, we don't want to change until the user actually registers it. Okay. So how do we get this automated? So if I make a change to any one of these, I8 through J8, then I do want something to change in here, assuming it is from today. So that's going to be based on a change event when I make a change. However, only when the user makes a change, when I make this kind of change here, I don't want anything to happen, right? I want to, I want to keep that expire, whatever that expired date to stay the same, right? So two different kinds of change. That's why we need to differentiate those kinds of changes. When we're loading it, this is going to go to true. So we want to make sure, and then back to false. So we want to make sure when we make a change to these, we want to make sure that B2 is false. And that's going to happen on the change event. When I make a cell change event, a worksheet change event here, something's going to happen. So let's go into that, our licensing sheet here. And we're going to focus on run a macro to set the expiration date, but not on license load. We want to make sure that B2 is false. When we make a change to I8, J8, or K8, we're going to run a macro. That's the next macro we're going to go over called license set expiration date. So when we move back into the license macros, 
we see that the next macro that we're going to go over is called license expiration date. We need to set the frequency quantity as long. The frequency quantity is this number right here located in I8. We also want to set the expiration frequency as a string. I need to know how often, right? Is it days, weeks, months, or years? And then also I want to know here what's in K, of course. Then what we're going to do is we need to know the, ex uh, the expiring date as a date. And also I want to know the start date. The start date is very important. The start date, of course, is going to be from today. And so we're going to put that into a variable. And of course, I need to calculate that expiring date based on the variables. Okay, the first thing what we want to do is if it's non-expiring, then we're just going to clear the contents. And that means if they if it's non-expiring, oh, I don't want to need to clear anything out. So you see everything gets cleared out. Nothing, right? We don't want to calculate anything if it's non-expiring. Okay, so we want to make sure that, that we don't do that. Okay, but assuming that it is expiring, we do then want to calculate. We're exiting the sub if it's non-expiring, and we're clearing the contents from I10 through K10. And simply what that's going to do is clear out, this is a merge cell, so we need to clear out all of the, not just the single cell, but all the way from I10 through K10 because it is a merged cell. But if it is expiring, we can continue. We're exiting if it's non-expiring because we're going to want to calculate that expired date. I want to make sure that we have values, right? I want to make sure that there are no blanks. In order for us to calculate that expires on date, we need to make sure that we have the frequency quantity, the frequency, and we need to have the from. So I want to make sure that those all contain values. If any one of them are blank, then we're going to exit the sub. And also what I want to make sure is if that is set from, if it's based on the registration, right? We don't know the registration date because the user is going to register it for us. They are going to be the ones that do the registration. So they set the registration date, unless you want to set the registration date. So, but if, if A6H6 is blank and is from registration, then we want to set. However, let's say it, it's let's say they have already registered it or you're registering it for them. You're going to set the registration date and it's also from registration. Then we can calculate the expires and then we'll work because we have a registration date to move from, right? But however, if H6 is blank, then we cannot calculate the expires on because we don't have a registration date when it's based on from when they register it. So you can register it for them or they can register it. Okay, if they register it, we can't calculate the expires on date. Okay, so continuing on here. So we're exiting the sub if H6 is blank and it's from registration. We're just going to clear the expires on date. We cannot register until there's an actual registration date. Okay, great. So, but what I want to know now is I want to set that start date. Now, that start date is going to be based on two parameters. The start date is going to be based on the registration date here, or it's going to be based on the current date, based on this. So we need to know that starting point. So what is that starting point going to be? It's going to be this date or the current date. And we're going to determine that by what is located here in K8. So if K8 equals from today, then the start date is equal to today's date, which is the date function. Else, the start date is simply what is in H6. That's going to set up our start date. And next up, I want to set that uh, frequency quantity. It's going to be based, based on I8, whatever the number is. And then our expiration frequency, which is going to be in J8. So we're setting that both up. Then what we're going to do is we're going to use select case because we have different cases, whether it's days, weeks, months, or years. We need to set that expiration date based on those. And great function to use is the date at and along with select case. When we use select case based on the X frequency, we know if the frequency, the case is days, we're going to add dates to that. So we're going to add use D, which is for days. We're going to add the number of days, and we're going to base it on the number of days based on that start date. However, if it's weeks, we're going to use again the date at, and we're going to use the weeks, which is WW. We're adding the number of weeks, and we're basing it on the start date. If it is months, we're adding the number of months, M for months, the frequency quantity, which is the number of months, and then based on the start date, years. Likewise, four Ys denotes the year, and the number of years, and the start date. That's going to automatically set that expire date based on those types of either one of those four different conditions, right? Those four different options. Then all we need to do is just take that expiration date and put it directly into I10. That's going to put that expiration date. Of course, I formatted it as a long date, right? So it's going to be based on that long date so we can actually see it. And then that's all we have to do. So that's very, very easily how we can generate an expiration date based on multiple 
conditions with just a little bit of code there. Okay, fantastic. Now what I want to do is I want to be able to save it, right? If I'm saving those changes, I want to make sure that that gets saved into the database. And of course, I want to fade out message here, letting the user know that that has been saved. And that's, of course, since we have data mapping, it's going to be very, very easy. So first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that we determine whether it is a new license or an existing license. We know that if there's no row assigned, right, there's an error, it's not found, that license number is not found inside this database, we know that it is going to be a brand new license, so we need to assign it a new row. So the first thing to do is determine what is in B4, whether it's new or existing. So we're going to, if B4 equals empty, then we know it's a new license based on this license sheet. Okay, we're going to set that license row as the first available row inside our license database using and XL up plus one. That's the first available row. So once we have that first available row, we then want to set that license number. We're going to take whatever's located in B3 and we're going to place that directly in column A in our license row. That's going to set that license number. We only need to do that for new license. Else in existing row, we can just set that variable of the license row based on what's in B4. Everything else, these lines of code, we're going to do whether it is the new or an existing. And we're going to use data mapping from column 2 to 12. We've already placed in column 1 our license, so we don't need to start. We're going to start in column 2, and we're going to go all the way to column 12. We're going to take whatever's in K4, and we're going to place it directly in the row. Whatever's in E6, of course, E6 meaning right here, located here, and we're going to place that directly inside our database located here. So we're just simply going to loop through that and place every one directly in here. And we're going to do that with just these three lines of code as we loop for the license call and goes 2 to 12. We're going to then take inside our database, inside that license row, inside that license column, we are going to place whatever is in this range right here. That range is located in row 1 and the license column. Row 1, so whatever is in this range, this range, this range, we're simply going to be placing whatever's here and we're going to place it directly inside our database. So that's all we have to do to add the license details. Next up, I want to run a macro that's going to update that remote database, right? We need to not only update our local, we need to update a remote database, which we're going to be getting in shortly because I want to make sure that all this license information gets uploaded around the world for our users, right? So that way, it's a very secure database so that when our users have a license, they they know whether their license expired or not and all that information. Then what I want to do is I want to run a macro that's going to load that list, right? When I make a change to that, when I save it, I want to reload this list and it's going to be based on the registration date. So it's automatically going to be sorted. So if I were to change this to 4.1, right, and then save it, we're going to see that it's going to be on a different order. So it's now going to be saved here. Now 4.1 is at the bottom. However, if we change it, let's do that back to 6.1. I also want it sorted, right? So if I save it, now we see that it's at the top, right? And it's automatically selected. I also want to automatically select it. So how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, the first thing we want to do is we're going to load, I'll go into this macro, and then also I want to run that fade out message, that save fade out message. That fade out message is right here. All we're going to be doing is taking a shape, that shape that you saw briefly called license save message. That's that shape that's here. If we don't want to see that selection, we want to see that, we go into our selection pane, and we see it's right here called license save message. If I were to display that, unhide it, you'd see that it's right here. I can change the shape, maybe I'll change the look of it, I can change the format of it, maybe stand, I want it to stand out a little bit, put it in orange, I can do that here. There, now we can see it. So it is this message that happens every time we save a license, you see that, that it's going to automatically fade out slowly, and then it's going to be gone. And that's all we need to do is run a loop and change that transparency of that shape, and then eventually simply hide it through visible equals false. That's all that that does. So that's this macro. This macro and this these two macros we haven't gone over yet. List load, and we're going to go over this. Basically, this macro is what we're going to do to simply load this list. And then we have another macro. Those two macros we're going to go over right now. Clear the filter, which is going to clear the filter. That means if we've set any filters here, it's going to clear those. So we have two for Fred Fredders. Clearing that filter is going to show those. Okay, so we have those two macros. The first one is going to be called clear filter. We're going to go in order, clear filter. And basically what I want to do is I want to create an advanced filter based on whatever the user has. So if I decide I'm going to put in 7.3, I want to make sure that any licenses that, that contain 7.3 are going to show up. So I need to create an advanced filter with those here. 
So how can I do that? Well, inside our license database, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating criteria. We're going to attach that criteria right here. So notice that license key has asterisk, 73 asterisk attached to it, right? If I add additional ones, they're going to be here. So if I decide to clear that filter here, and I want to base it on a user email, and I want to do, let's say, Fred again, our favorite word, and I want to know only those emails that contain the word Fred. If we go back into our license place, we see now in the user email in our criteria, Fred has been wrapped around that wildcard. That means anything containing Fred before or after is going to be show up inside our results. Our results are going to show up here. So we're going to do that with an advanced filter. And then lastly, once I get those results, I'm going to sort them descending based on our registration date. So the newest registration dates are going to appear at the top and the oldest ones are going to appear at the bottom. And the same thing when we clear the filter, it's also going to be showed here. So we see that our registration dates are going to be automatically showing up here based on that date. So the first thing what we want to do is clear the filter. So we're going to clear the contents of our licenses, right? When I clear those filters, I want to clear anything else here. But how do we happen, right? So we're going to clear that filter. We'll go into it in just a moment, how everything happens. Clearing that, and then I also want to clear any criteria that might be here, right? Any criteria here must also be cleared out. So that's the second line of code. Inside our license database, O3 through V3, we're going to clear out all that criteria. And then we're going to run the macro, which is simply going to, this next macro coming up called list load. So this is where we're going to get into all that criteria. Now you saw, once again, that if I make a change here, we see that that criteria is going to automatically appear here. How does that happen? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to make sure that when we make a change of change anywhere from D13 all the way through K13, that's when I want something to happen. And that's based on the change event. So when we go back into the license, when we go back into the worksheet change event, we're going to make some foot changes. We're going to run an advanced filter based on a filter change, based on changes to these cells here from D13 through K13. And I want to make sure if the target value does not equal empty, and I want to differentiate. I need to do a little bit of differentiation. Notice these three fields. These are date or number fields. These are going to be text fields. So I need to handle these ones a little bit differently, right? So if I only want to know one date, right? Of course, I don't want to put asterisks around this. So when we look in the license database, I want to show only those dates here, right? Just the dates. So we want to make sure that on opens these three fields, we're not going to put any asterisks. So we need to differentiate between those two types of fields because they're either date or numerical. So to do that, what I'm going to do is differentiate. If the target column is less than eight, why would that be less than eight? Let's take a look here. This is course column four five six seven and eight so anything less than eight or anything greater than 11 or 12 right let's say i think it was 11 or greater than 10 sorry then we want to do it. so so that means for eight nine and ten eight nine and ten we're going to handle those differently for column 11 it's going to be text so that's why i'm going to differentiate between here if the target column is less than eight or the target column is greater than 10, those are going to be text-based fields. Let's put that in here. Text, then we're going to focus on text. Let's put it in there. Text-based fields. Else, it's going to be date or number column. Date or number column. So for text-based fields, what do I want to do? I want to wrap those around the asterisk, right? Because I want to know those wildcards. Text-based fields, I want to know any type of field or, or any type of record containing that, containing that. So how do we do that? So what I want to do is I want to find a relationship between this row, this cell here, and this one right here. So what is it? Well, let's take a look at what column this is. This is column here, column 15, and we know it's row 3. Column 15, row 3. This, right, the license key here is column 15. Four. So if this is column four and row 13, column four, row 13. So how do I know the difference? Well, that's going to be a six column difference. It's going to be a six column difference. So to do that, all I need to do is make a differentiation, excuse me, 11 column difference. We see this is column four and this is column 15, right? This is column 15. So it's 11 column difference. Okay. So 11 column difference, right? If I'm making a change to column four and I want to, I want that change to be reflected right here, I need to add 11 columns, correct? So that's all we're going to do. I'll add those 11 columns. So 
the license database, we know it's row three where we want to make that change. The target column, let's say four, right, for the license key, plus 11 is going to be 15. So we know row three, column 15 is where we want that criteria to show up. And we want to show whatever the user put in, but what I want to do is I want to wrap that around those wildcard, the asterisk before and the asterisk after. And that's only for text-based fields. But what about if it is a day field? If it's a date or number field, simply put that target value in exactly as the user added it without the asterisk before or after. That's all we have to do. Else, what do you mean else? The else means it is not. In this case, let's say we're, they're entered a value, but what if they clear the value out? If they clear the value out, we're going to clear it out. So for what does that mean? That means that let's say they decide they're going to delete this. When it's cleared, I want to know everything. So again, cleared here, we want also to be to remove those, to simply remove whatever it is. Let's do that one more time, right? Pending, right? If they put in pending here, I want to know only those pending, right? So simply it's going to add pending here. But I want to, if they clear the contents out here, if they delete the values here, I also want to make sure that they are cleared here, too, just to make sure. So I want to clear it here. So we're just going to make sure that we're going to simply clear the contents out to make sure. All right, we could probably put that up here too, but it's fine. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to run the macro called list load. That's the next macro that we're going to go inside our order. So that's here, list load. That's all we have to do. So when we do that, what I want to do is I want to clear any licensing data. The first thing what we want to do is take all the data, any data located from D14 all the way through K and down and clear that out. And that's just what we're going to do here. I also want to clear out the selected row. If I've selected a specific row, that's going to be located in B6. That happens on selection change. When I make a selection change here inside the licenses, focus on the selection change down here. And I want to make sure that D contains a value, meaning the user selects any cell between D14 and K99. And of course, D must contain a value, right? We can't, if, if something happens there and D doesn't contain a value, we don't want anything to happen. If D, we're going to do a few things. I want to set B6 to the target row. And I also want to make sure that we are going to set the license key B3. We're going to get into that in just a moment on the low, but I want, since we're on this sheet, B3 is going to take on whatever's inside D. That means every time I select something, that license key I want to put directly in here. Okay, so that's it for the selection. Then we're going to load the license. So that's it. Though that macro we're also going to get in because that macro is the next one coming up. Right. So that's going to be li license load. So let's continue with this list load. That's the macro that we're going to have. We've already placed our criteria, right? As we add in something here, we've already placed our criteria. So now all we need to do is simply determine the last row of our data run our advanced filter based on the headers, making sure that the headers are exactly the same as our original data, and then having those results display all the way from AA to AH. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We want to make sure that the last row, based on the license database, if it's less than four, we're going to exit the sub. We're going to run our advanced filter based on that original data from A3 to column L. We're having that criteria from O2 to V3. If we drop this down, we see that the Criteria is O2 to V3, and the results are coming from AA to AH. That's what we're going to have. We want unique true. We're going to get the last results row. I need to know the last results row. In this case, it's four, but I want to make sure if it's less than three, that means we have no data. We can exit the sub out. And then I, again, I want to sort them descending based on that registration date. So we're going to clear the sort fields first. Then we're going to, so we're going to focus on with sort, clearing that. Then what we're going to do is we're going to add a license key. We need to call out that sheet again because we're inside the with sort. AE3 is the first row inside the column that we want to sort, and we want to sort it descending, the, the newest dates first. We're going to base it on all the data based on AA3 and the last results row, and then we're going to apply that filter. Then all we need to do is simply bring in over the data, bring it all over into our license. So D4 through K in the last row is going to be pump 11 and the reason is our first row starts on row 14 right our data here starts exactly on row 14 so i want to compensate our data here is going to come from row 3 so the difference is 11 rows so we need to add 11 to that i'm going to bring it all over bring in all that data okay now what i want to do is notice when i brought it over right i want to make sure that we highlight it notice i want to highlight if that if the load the row that's loaded right i know that the selected id is here 
But what I want to do is I want to look for that ID here. If it's found, I want to take whatever row it's found, and I want to place that row directly in here. And that way, automatically it gets selected. See, automatically we know which one is selected. So to do that, what we're going to do is I want to make sure that B3 contains a value, right? If we don't have any ID, we can't find it in here because it doesn't, it's not here. So I want to know what row. For example, if I click New License, right, and I clear the filter, there's nothing to select, right? We, we, there's nothing to select because there's nothing inside here. It's not found, or at least it's not found. It's a new, there's a new license, which is fine, but it's not found in here. And if it's not found, I don't want it selected. Only if it's found and I clear the filter, now it's found. You see that? I've selected something, so now it's found. So if it's not found, we don't need to select anything. So if what we're going to do is we're going to take the license key and put it in a variable from B3. And then I'm going to look for it. If it's not found, it could create an error. So we're going to wrap it in on air zoom next and on air go to zero. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to place the row that it's found on. So I'm going to look. Where am I looking? I'm looking in column D14 all the way up. I'm looking for the license key. I'm looking in the values. And I'm looking at whole. And I want to extract the row that it's found on. And I want to place that row directly inside B6 if it is found. Okay, if it's not found, it could create an error. So that's why we've done this. Okay, and that's all we have to do to automatically select it. So when we clear the filter, this, this way, when I remove the row here, it gets cleared out, but I clear the filter again, it's found already, and it's going to be reselected here. Okay, great. Now the macro that we just went over, remember on selection change, it is that selection change that we're going to actually load it. This is the macro that we're going over now. So for this macro, all we need to do is just make sure that we have a database row. We can't load anything without a database row. So this will automatically be calculated based on that license. We've already, in the selection change event, we've already taken the license to column D and placed it directly in B3. When we do that, it calculated the row of the database. As long as we have a row, we can load it in. So we're going to make sure B4, if it's empty, we can exit the sub. We're going to put that into a variable. And then all we're going to do is we're going to set the license load to true. Remember, this is really important so that we don't trigger a brand new expires on date. We don't want to trigger that. And then af after we load in all the data, we're simply going to set it to false. Loading in all the data simply using the reverse data mapping. This time we're taking everything from our database inside our license row and our license column, and we're placing it directly inside the ranges that are located in row one of the database. So this time we're taking all the information from our database here, and we're placing it in whatever cell K4 or E6 we're placing it directly inside in this screen here. And that's it. That's all we have to do. Using data mapping, it saves us a ton of time. When we delete a license, I simply want to then clear it out except for the license. I want to keep the license in database. I want to clear everything else. And then I want to set the status to pending, right? So if I go in here and I want to delete, let's go ahead and delete this one. Deleting the license. Are you sure we want to delete it? Click yes. It's going to automatically delete it. And then we see that this has now been deleted and we see it's always been deleted here. So we're gonna do that inside. So first thing what I wanna do is let the user know, are you sure you wanna delete this? And if they say no, we're gonna exit the sub out. We need to determine whether it's been saved or not. How do we know if it's been saved? Well, I know if it's been saved if B4 contains a row, right? This, so if B4 is empty, we know it has not been saved. So if I make some changes to here, and I decide I wanna delete this one here, or let's go ahead and actually do a new license. This is what I wanna do, make some changes here, and I decide to delete this, then we know that there's no row associated, click yes, it's simply gonna clear out the contents, right? So all, if it has not been saved yet, if B4 equals empty, we're gonna to go to not save. We can skip deleting the row and go right down to here. However, if it has been saved, we're gonna do these things. The license row is gonna be B4. We're gonna clear out the contents between B and L, clearing it out, not deleting the row, but clearing out the contents, setting the status in column B to deleted, and then we're gonna run a macro that's gonna add or update the license. We haven't done that macro yet, we will shortly. This is the same macro that we ran when we were running the save, right? So when we ran the save here, all the way up here is the same macro, add or update. So run macro to update remote database. That's what we need to get into in a moment. So that's on delete. Also continuing on, all we're gonna do is run the macro that adds a new, it just clears the contents and then reloads the list. So those are the two uh, macros that we run. So after we delete, we're just gonna refresh this list and then we're gonna set, we're gonna run the macro that adds new, which is gonna clear everything out and set those defaults. So that's it, that's all we have to do on deleted. Great, but notice when we make a save, when I save it, we 
have to have this data online. I cannot keep it just in Excel because our users of our applications need to access this data. Of course, they don't access it directly. It happens all behind the scenes in a secure environment, but we need to make sure that it's accessed. So we need to find an, uh, basically an online database. Now we could use a lot of them. There's a lot of different possibilities, Airtable, Google Sheets, uh, and, and whatnot. But what we're going to use is something called Data Store. Now Data Store is available through of course, an application that we've used a few times called Integromat, or previously called Integromat, and now called Make. Probably good they changed the name since I never pronounced it right. So it's called Make now, and Make is going to allow us to have a database. Some of the things that allow us to do that is something that they call here Data Store. So if we look in here, we can see our Data Store. So clicking on More here will let us know that we created Data Store. It's called Data Store. And all I've done is simply created a, a database called License Data. You can create this. So if I browse this, we can see it very, very similar. We've got a key and a license. These are the same thing, so that's fine. We've got a status application, so we have exactly the same database that we have in Excel. It is no different than this database right here, except for the double license key column, that, except for the double key. That's it. But everything else is the same, and one's kind of an automated one. So it's exactly the same as this, and I've used the same name than everything else. So that makes it a lot easier when we duplicate them. Okay, you can do that. Now to do that, right, to create that, let's say you want to create that, how would we create a new data store? Well, if we add a data store here to do that, we only have one data store available on the free version, but if we edit it, right, so if you, you'll, you'll go ahead and add a data store, and then what you do is you'll get a screen like this. You'll have an add here, and then what you can do is create a data structure, right? And I've already created a data structure here called license data structure, license data structure. And what we're going to do is we're going to create that structure. We need to know a little bit more information about that. So let's go back in here and then we can click edit that. So when you're adding your new one, what you want to do is you want to add in all the fields. And to do that, all you need to do is just click here, add items. So we're going to add items is basically adding the columns. Now we're going to say what type of column it is. We're going to give it, if we edit it, we're going to see that this is called license key and it's a text type. We didn't give it any different default. I didn't make it required. So we're going to do that for each column, giving it a brand new, adding one, giving it a name, giving it a type. And notice that uh, we have here under, so we've given all of them, registration date. This one I've created a date type. So this is the date type of field. And the license type, frequency quantity, this is going to be a number type field number type. So for every single column, I've created this structure, and this is going to allow us to create this data store. So I've done that for every single column. So once we've done that, you can create that database. Then all we need to do is save information from to it. So what I want to do is I want to, every time I make a change in my application, I want to upload that those details to this particular table. So basically what I want to do inside this if the record is found, I want it updated. If it's not found, I want to add a new one. So for example, let's take a look at this last one, Lisa Lopez. We see that's expiration date one in 30 days, and we have expiration of June 4th. So if I go into my application and I see Lisa Lopez here, 30 days, June 4th, but I decide we're going to expire it in one year, right? I'm just going to make the change here, one year, and then it's automatically May 6th. I'm going to save that, right? It's going to automatically save and update that. And then what we're going to be doing is go inside our database here and taking a look inside and just refreshing this. And we're going to see that change reflect. As soon as we refresh the database, we're going to see that that change has already been reflected here. Lisa Lopez, now one year from today on May 6th. Okay, but what about when we add a new one, right? I want to make sure that when we add a new one, new license get automatically added onto the database. So let's go ahead there change this to Debbie, create a brand new one. We don't need anything more. Expires on, let's say 30 days from registration, just save it just like it is. Okay, so this is a new record. It's never been created. And I wanna make sure that this also gets added into the database on a new row. So if I take a look at this, refreshing that data, we're gonna see that we now have the last one here, Debbie has already been added. So we're gonna either add a row. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're gonna do that through something called a scenario. So if we take a look inside here, we're going to create a brand new scenario. Now scenarios are here and we go in there and basically this is going to be some type of uh, some, when something happens, something else happens. And we can create different folders here and I've got this one called limited access workbooks. We're going to be focused on two scenarios here. The first one's called update license data. If you want to create a brand new scenario, all you do is need here. You can change the name 
And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating something called a webhook. We've been over this before if you see my videos. So the first thing what I want to do is create a webhook. This is going to trigger, right? I want to create a trigger. When I make a change or I delete a record, I want to create a trigger. That trigger is called a webhook. And so when we go down here, we're going to click on the webhook. And it's going to call it, we're going to call it custom webhook, custom webhook here. And then what we're going to be doing is I want to send this to the data store. So the first thing we're going to do is create this custom webhook. So we're going to click add. You'll give it any name you want, right? So, so we can just give it a, a test name for now. And then what we're going to be doing is I'm simply going to get save that. So we're going to create an automatic web. We want to copy this and we're going to put that inside the code. Okay, so the next up, next thing what we want to do is I want to send some information to our data store, to our data store. And then what we're going to do is click add another module. So basically I've created one data store. So we're going to type in data store here and it's automatically going to come up here. Now we've only got one database and what I want to do is I want to go adding or replacing a record. And now I've already done this already. So let's go into what I've already done. So we don't need to save this one because it's already been done. And I want to go into this one called here, Webhooks Data Store. So you see we've got a webhook. This one I've already done. And I've created a webhook. Here's my webhook here, okay, just as we've already done. And I've copied that to the clipboard. And I'm going to add that in a code. What that's going to do is I'm going to send all of that information that we updated. I'm going to send it into this webhook. And it's going to send it into the data. And then what we're going to be doing is called adding or replacing a record. Add or replace a record. So I'm going to send some information here. So before I get into this, let me show you how I send it from the code into the data store and then we're going to go in. So first we go over the code and we understand how that we get the information inside this and then how we send it or update or add a new record to the data store. So let's go into the code, but please remember it is this webhook that we're going to be doing, this webhook right here, the one that ends in 9TV. That's the one we're going to focus on here. So inside, back inside our application, we have something called a module called app macros, app macro. And the first thing what I want to do is check, I'm going to go down here called add or update license data. That's the one, this is the macro that we're running when we make a change or make it update, save that. Remember, this is the same macro that we're going to focus when we delete here, right? Add or update license, or it's also the one when we save it, right? So when we save it, it's add or update license. This is the one I want to go over with you. So inside our app module, add or update license data. So this is the one I want to go to. First thing we're going to mention is an object HTTP because we need to send the information through HTTP. A URL is a string and a response, we're going to get a response back and a JSON is a string. I need to know the license row. That's going to be based on row on B4, as we know, that row. And if it's zero, exit the sub. If we don't have a row, there's no data we can set. I need to set all the information. I want to send all the information here. And the only way to do that is to have a row. So to do that, we need to make sure. So we're going to set the object HTTP create M S X M L two server X M L H T T P. And basically what that's going to do is set it up to send information via the web. Okay. I want to clear out the variable. I need to create a variable called license data. I want all that information inside a string variable called license data. I want to make sure that that gets cleared out. And what we're going to do is we're going to focus on license database. Now we have a lot of data, right? I mean, there's like 12 columns of data. I don't want to create a variable for every single one. I could, but it, it gets time consuming. Why don't we use data mapping and create something very, very quickly. And we'll call it field one, field two, field three. So I'm going to create, this one's going to be called field one. This is going to be called field 12 and everything in between. We'll remember what order it's in. We've created, the important thing is that our database here has exactly the same order, right? Except for this first one, which we're not going to be able to add. One, two, three, all the way through 12. Everything's in the same order. So we can pretty much map it. We know field one, field two. So we don't need to name them. But it's really going to help us out less in the code if we use some kind of data mapping to automate the data. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to set that first license key. I want to know the license key. I want to put that into a variable. But it may not be, this step actually may not be necessary, but it's okay. We This one may not be necessary right now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, I'll probably get rid of this line. For the license column equals 1 to 12. Because we have 12 columns, 1 through 12, I want to map it. And what I want to do is I want to build a string with all that data. And then I want to put a label. I want to create a label and a data. So in going to put that inside our string variable. So the license data, whatever it's existing already, in case there is any existing, is going to be equal to that license data and the field. I want to give it, the, here's our label. 
our label has the word field and our license column. So it's going to be called field one, field two, field three, right? So here, this together is our label. This together equals whatever our data is. Here's our data in the row and in the column. So basically, we're going to match up field one equals the license. Field two equals this. So that's where we're going to create this string and build this string as we loop through all columns. So with just three lines of code, we can put it all that data into a single string separated by the field names. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that webhook. Here's the one webhook that ends in 9TV, right? Here's our webhook. I'm going to put the question mark at the end of it, and I'm going to put the license data, that string. This contains all of our data, everything here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to send it over the web. We're going to use these four lines of code to do just that. We're going to get a response in the text. I want to make sure that the response says accepted, right? Every, if, it go, if everything goes well, it'll say accepted. If there's a problem, it won't say. So if the response does not equal accepted, then I want to let the user know, please check your internet or check your webhook or check something, right? When you get this file, remember, this is not going to work for you. Otherwise, you'd all use up my operations, right? Right, Sammy? So we want to make sure that we don't know. So you're going to have to put your own webhook. That's why it's important to also take and watch these videos to make sure that you understand how to place your create your own webhook and put your own webhook in here very important because this one's not going to work for you that's it that's all we have to do so when i run this it's going to send everything over so what does it look like when it's running let's take a quick look what i'm going to do is i'm going to click run once and it's going to wait for it's going to be listening right so i'm going to run this macro i can run it through different ways i can just run it or i can just run it when i save in this license we're going to quickly go back into here we're going to see that it comes up so we're going to take a look and see what happened. This allows us to see what happened. So we have some outputs. This is what came in. Field one, here's our license. Field two is our status. Field three, and so we have all, if there's blank, which is fine, one. So we have all the information here, right? Some of the fields are blank. And we're basically, so it got in here. So notice that we have our field, our label, and our, of course, our value here. Into, and then what I want to do is I want to put that in the data store. So the first thing we're having is we're going, let's close this part out so we can see this, see it clearly and close this one out here. So remember, it's add or replace a record, data store, add or replace a record. So that's what we're going to do. So inside this data store, the, we know that field one, important, remember, field one here is our license key. That's very important. So field one, I'm going to then put inside our key. Right? I want to overwrite an existing record, if possible, right? We're going to update it or add a new one. This option is only, so what we're going to do is we're going to overwrite an existing record and we're going to map that to field one. I want to make sure that we're based on field one, based on that, we're going to open it. So it's going to look up, if, it's, if that license key is found, it's going to overwrite whatever is there. Okay, we're going to put the license key in field one, the status field two. So all we're going to be doing is dragging these over in order, field three in the next one, field four the next one so all we need to do is just bring it or of course you can just double click here you know clicking on here we'll do it too whatever field is active right we don't want two of them and so as we add it so here's our data our column labels are automatically up based on our data store so everything gets in order it's just very simple all we do is just drag in all the way to field 12 that's it and click ok that's how we automatically update the data store very simple and the last thing is make sure you save any changes and then you turn it on right the free version of make allows us to run two scenarios so we can do that just fine we're running two scenarios okay great so that's how we update the data database right that's how we update this little macro will automatically update our database so cool we have everything there all right so but what i want to do is i want to also check for new license data and i want to make sure that when our license data comes in that we're going to be and this macro is simply browsing for a folder we don't need to go into that macro all that macro does is just browse for that folder that of our, of our data however that folder is very important that folder is going to be where the information comes in when users make in, make updates i want that information to come back into here so how are we going to do that? Great, so we understand how our information is going to get saved both in the application and both saved on our remote database right here and called license data. So we understand that. But now how do our end users capture that data, get that data, or look up their license and get that information? Of course, that's going to be in our remote database. And that's going to be located inside the remote modules. So now I have exactly the same module here. It's called user registration macros. But it's the same module that we're going to put inside. So I'm going to open that warehouse manager, that one we were working on with the license. So this particular application, let's say this is your end user, and this is what we're going to do. So 
we're going to create so notice how everything just happened because it's already been registered so i'm going to go to the end and what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this start screen here as you saw so we're going to drag and drop or create your own start screen it's not that important what is important is these hidden matters right so we went over this briefly we have a registration details we have a new registration if we need to generate a new one we can use that same exact formula and then again we have all 12 variables all 12 inside our database so everything there so what we want to do is give the user the ability to save it so when you release this workbook you're going to have all of this empty right you can probably i think you'll probably have an application name but you can have the rest empty okay so let's say you release this workbook and you give it to a user you say okay you can use a free version for 30 days okay so let's save it okay so we want to give them the ability to have a free version for 30 days and then we want them to register we'll go through that scenario so what we now we went over this already once before just briefly but what i want to do is show you exactly how it happens on the inside well the first is a user form right so we have a user form now remember this same user form i've got two workbooks open i've got our limited access workbook we've got the same registration form and of course, I have the same form located in our warehouse. So in our warehouse manager. So all you need to do is just simply take the one from where and just drag it into your workbook, right? Very, very simple here. Okay, so let's take a look inside this user form inside, of course, our warehouse manager. How is this form? This form is relatively simple. I've got an option whether it's a new registration or they have a license key, right? If they have a license key, right, maybe they've purchased it and maybe you've emailed them a license key and you want them to put that license key in there because that license key may have a one year expiration date and their current registration or the new registration may have a, just a 30 day free. So we got some information. And then three fields. We want them to put their name and we want them to put their email. And this is important for marketing or being able to contact them or being able to track their license. So if we look inside the properties, we have, I've got an option group. This one's called Exist existing key this field is called new registration right so i've got a differentiate between here i've got the license key this field's called license key this field's called uh, username and this one's called user email then i've got buttons here one's called send button and one's called cancel i've just used a custom background here on the i've created a picture here so this little bitmap here it's just a little picture that i've used this picture just a jpeg very very simple okay so make sure patreon members you can get all these pictures if you want and, uh, they get all the resources so make sure you join our patreon tons of benefits coming up there so this very very basic registration forms can allow us to do all of that there's a few things behind the scenes that i want to let you know of. so when we run this form right let's go ahead let's go get out of here and run this form here when i run that form i want to make sure that if they have a new registration i want to make sure to generate automatically a brand new registration but if they have one i want them to put that in right so we need to differentiate between new form or license right if they have one they should put it in if it's a new registration maybe they want a demo version they can just put it in and they can register it themselves which is kind of cool but when they register it themselves of course you can have a very limited time which is very very cool and you can set that yourself so how are we going to do that well that's going to be of course from some code behind it so if we go ahead and view the code behind it right we're going to check to see some code now we made a change right if we take a look here existing key remember that is the one that's that is the sometimes i have more than one here it gets a little bit confusing especially when they got the same form right if they make a change to this i want something to happen you saw something happen new registration i want them to put that an automatic license but i want to clear it out if they have their own key so you saw that right you saw that again let's go over new registration i want to put whatever automated registration code is here if it's a new one i want to clear it out so how are we going to do that well we're going to do this based on the click when they click the existing key what do i want to do i want to make sure that any information that is already saved inside b8 b11 b12 comes into these fields that means if they have any information that is saved here from b8 an existing license key or an existing username or an existing email will come in right so that's what I want to do. I want to put that. However, what if they click on the new registration, right? New. Oh, this is it. So if you want to say these are all the buttons, new registration, and on the click event. When they click it, we want something to happen. What do we want to happen? Well, the first thing what I want to do is I want to know if they've already registered it. If they've already registered a free version, right? If they already have a license key in here, certainly we don't want to give them a new key. This is the new key that's randomly created. We want to give them whatever is located in B8. But if B8 is 
empty, right, if they have no existing, we want to assign a new one based on what is in B7. So that's exactly what we're going to do. If B8, their existing license key, doesn't equal empty, then use the previously created license. So then ME is the form, license key value equals whatever's in B8. However, if they have not created, if, there's, if B is empty, then we're simply going to give them a brand new one, a generated license key based on the formula, based on what's in B7, we're going to assign it. So this is going to assign the new key, either the previously created or the new one here. And so that's all, that's really easy. That's all we need to do to create this functionality right here. Oh, let's go back into this one here. So that's all we need to do to create this different functionality right here. Great. So what if it's a new registration, right? I want them to add their name and I want to add their information here and then I want to be able to send those details so that they can automatically register so if we do Rick Royce here and then email the Rick I want them automatically to send that and I want that information to save saved so when I send those details I want to make sure that it's automatically saved now that information gets automatically created and saved so now Let's take a look back in here. Let's go back into the start. We had a lot of things happen here. So back into the start. Now the information, now that license key has been saved. Now the name has been saved. Now the email has been saved. Now we've got all this information. And now it's also been sent to our database. So that brand new registration is automatically updated. And I'm going to show you how, to, how that happens in a minute. So we take a look inside back. Let's take a look back inside that database again, right inside here and our data stores and we can leave that we don't want to save changes to that and we browse that and we see now inside our database all the way at the bottom we have rick royce and it's all changed so and of course i'm going to show you how that comes in so we're going to do a few things here so let's go into the macro to see exactly what happens that is the macro that happens when they ch make changes to that when they click save right so when they go into this register and they click send details if i double click on here we see that the send button is going to run this macro here called register and check license register and check license so that's what and inside our modules inside this user registration macros right here this is where everything's going to be closed right so this is where everything and it's the same one inside your workbook limit access i've created the same module okay so that's one we're going to focus on here so-called register and check license so inside that again what, what i want to do is i want to send all of the information we're going to again dimension that object http as an object url string just so we did response and json as a string the license key registration type and license data strings and also field row as long and the excuse me, expiration data as a string so the first thing what i want to do is i want to make sure that they filled in all the required information right if the license key with this registration form we're focused on this form that we've created the license key is empty or the username is empty or the email is empty if either one of those please let the user know to fill out all the fields and we're going to exit this up Okay, then I need to determine, is it a new registration or is it an existing registration? So how do I know that? Well, if, again, the option here, remember, we have that field called new registration. If that value equals true, then it's a new registration. How do we know that? Let's take a quick look back inside the form here. And we can see that this one, this, if we take a look at this field here, we see that this is new registration. It's currently selected. So we know that the value here is true. If we click on here, the enable we see that this value is false so we just want to determine so i'm going to set a variable if that happens if the new registration equals true then we know it's a new registration i want to set the registration type variable here called new okay then i know it's new so i want to set some defaults i want to set the b9 our status as active right so what i'm using now i'm just going to simply fill out this information right all this bring all this information in here so the b9 is going to be active i want to set the username I'm going to put that directly in b11 based on the field username and the value i want to set the email inside b12 based on the form field user email i want to set the registration date as the current date the current date based on the registered date. I want to set B14 to 1. Remember, this is the license type. Expiring, I'm going to set it to expiring. 2 is for non-expiring. Remember, we went over that. So I also want to set the frequency. Now, this is where you as a developer can do decide what you want to send. I'm, I decided, okay, 30 days for free, right? I want to give them 30 days for free. So the frequency is 30 days. Expiring days from expiring days and from the registration. We're going to set it based on the registration date. That's just our defaults, right? So we're, these are based defaults based on just something I decided. I want to give them 30 days from the day that they have registered. And then what I want to do is I only want to 
update the registration expiration date if not if there's already an expiration date we don't need to add one right but if there isn't an expiration date then i want to simply set b18 is equal to the current date plus 30. we're just setting a 30-day expiration date that's all right and we're, just, we're resetting the current opens i want to know the number of opens we're going to set b19 to one so basically that's going to fill out all of this information right here so all this is now information all right, so now that it's all been filled out, I want to be able to be send that information. However, what if it's an existing key? If it's an existing key, all I want to do is maybe update the username, the email, and the registration date. Everything else is the same. So if it's a username, all we're doing is updating that. That means we're not updating any of, why would it be existing? Let's say they purchased it and you are going to send them the information. You're going to send them the key. You're going to, and that key inside that key will already have an expiration date. So we don't want to adjust that, right? Maybe you've given one year or maybe it's no expiration date. So that for an existing registration, the licensing information comes with that license key. So that's very important, right? So it's automatically there, right? So all they need to do then is send simply send the information and the licensing information will come back, right? Do you understand what I'm saying? Right? So whatever the licensing, it's going to come back, right? So if there, if, if you've given them this licensing, this license information, all we need to look up here, or let's say this one here, let's say at least a little bit, we need to look up, we know the expiration date. All we need to do is look up her license and determine, okay, that's one year from the current date. May 6 is the expiration, so we can find out that information and bring that licensing information back into it. So here we go. So license key, we're setting the license key is going to be based on the license key value here. So license keys, so we're going to set that into a variable based on care. And then what we're going to be doing is I want to place that license key directly inside B8. Now this is regardless of whether it is a new or an existing registration key, right? We're just simply placing the license key we're, and of course, it's going to come directly from this field here, license key. So we're putting that directly inside B8. So now we have all the fields filled out. Now, once we have everything filled out, we're going to send that to our database. Right? I'm going to send that all over, send all those updates, whether it's new or existing, to the information. So we're going to set that object just as we did before. We're going to build that data string. Again, we're building a data string. We're going to set the registration type equal to the registration. I want to send the registration type also along with all the data first thing i want to do is this is going to be new or existing and it's going to be registration type because i want to make some decisions based on that because if it's a new registration we don't need to know the expiration date we already know the expiration date 30 days from the current date however it's an existing that expiration date is stored inside here so i need to extract it out right we need to know what that expiration date is. Okay, great, because all you've done is send them the, the license key, so we don't know the expiration date yet. So we need to send the information. I need to know new or existing. I need to send that along. Then what I want to do is I want to build that license data stream. I want to build it with all of our data. But this time, we're going to run a loop, not our database loop. Remember, last time we, we went a loop from our database. This time, I'm going to run a loop from 8 to 19 and add all that inside, also adding the fields. So but this time we're going from 8 to 19, right? Or in this case, 1 to 12 and simply adding 7. If I add 7 I, to the field row, I know it's going to start off in row 8, right? So the license data, right, is going to simply be the license data and the field. We're giving it a name and the field row. This is going to allow us to do 1. The reason we're going 1 to 12, so we're, we're giving those labels 1 to 12. And then I want to give it, where's the value? The value is coming from column B and the field row plus seven, right? Field row, it starts at one, right? But our value row start at eight, B8, B9. So we have to add seven all the way to 19. So great. So once we've added that into that string, we've built this string up. It contains all of our data. It also contains what type, whether it's a new or existing. Then all we need to do is send that over. So I'm going to put that into a URL. We're going to create a brand new webhook, a brand new webhook, and a brand new scenario. And I've done that already right here. So if we take a look inside here, I've got a brand new scenario right here. This one here. Yep, that's the one. And if we zoom in here, I've created a brand new webhook. Let's take a look at this. This is the webhook where we're just going to accept all that information. Notice that it ends in L2B right here, I2B here. So that's the webhook that's going to accept all of the information in this brand new scenario here. 
Okay, but we want a few things to happen here, right? Because there's some different things to happen. If it's a new registration, I want to happen here. If it's an existing registration, I want something to happen. So we've added something called a router here, and a router can be found right here. So what we're going to be doing is we want to do some different things. If it's a new registration, all I need to do is send the information to the data store and then send it to our application through Dropbox so that we can update our own application. If it's an existing application, we need to do a few things. So the first thing we want to do is take that string and put it directly inside our URL along with all the license data. We're going to send that over, sending that over here, and we're going to get a response back here. So this, at this point right here, we're going to switch directly into that because our response is going to come right in here. But there's a lot of things that happen in between. First of all, remember, we're going to send all that information here. If we look in here, we're going to send all that information. So for example, registration type, remember, it's going to be new or existing. Then all the information from fields 1 through 12. So that's the information that's going to be sent. Then what I want to do is I want to make a decision. I need to do some different things. So we're adding in a router. A router is basically a split. Then what I want to do is I want to add a filter. A filter. So we can add a filter by clicking on here. So if it's a new registration, I want to do something. So what is that something? Well, if I click, let's go out of here. And I want to go back into, let's go here. And we're going to go into, let's save those changes in case we made any. And go back into the original diagram here. So this is the one I'll look at. Let's take a look at here. So here is a filter that we can, we can zoom in here. So I'm going to add a filter in here. So if it's a new registration, it's going to be new registration type equals new, right? So here. But that didn't happen here. But what if it's an existing? If it's an existing registration, I want to type existing. So how do we do that? So we can if we click here, we see that we give it a label called existing registration. And if we give it a condition, the condition is the registration type must equal existing. This, if I click here, is going to be called new registration, also based on the variable registration type. But this one is if, it, if it's new. So I want to do this, of course, if it's new. And I want to do all of this if it's existing. So let's start out with if it's a new. If it's a new registration, all we need to do is send it to the data store, add or update or replace a record, and create or overwrite a text file. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is simply add all that data, just as we did before, the field 2, overwrite, existing, right? And then all the fields, field 1, field 2, all the way up to 12, simply adding that inside, adding or updating. In this case, we're gonna, it's almost always going to be adding it because it's a brand new registration, so it would not already be in our data store. Then what I want to do, it's inside our data store, but I want to make sure that we update our records, right? When I click our application here, I want to make sure that that information gets sent automatically up, and I want to make sure that that information gets updated automatically, okay? So how do we have that? How, so notice that that happened, Rick Royce is here already. So I need to make sure that we're sending that inside to our application so that we can get that. So that's going to be through Dropbox. And it's going to be through text files inside our Dropbox. And so inside my Dropbox, I've created a dedicated folder called License Data. And it is this folder that we've browsed for. It is the same folder that's located here. And that's where I want all the information to come. Right? I want to know, I want to get all that information, and I want to put it directly inside that Dropbox file in a TXT file. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to do that through our, of course, in make here. So we're going to do that through here called create or overwrite a text file. If I click here, and once we've added Dropbox and we've linked it up, clicking Dropbox, we want to look for something that says create or overwrite a text file. That's what I'm looking for. And it is this that I'm going to do. Once you connect your Dropbox, you're going to set this to overwrite, and you're going to map a path. And where do I want that path? I want it in license data, and then I want it in my path. Now, keep in mind that these are forward slashes. Forward, everything else is where your Dropbox is located, right? So notice that I've got it in my original Dropbox directory here. Here's the path here, D Dropbox. So you, do, you get rid of this. You don't need that. You change the backslashes to forward slashes. So license data is where it's going to be here. Then what I want to do is I want to give it a specific name. I'm going to call this file license underscore. And then I want that. I want to make sure it's unique. So I'm going to use field one. Field one, of course, is our license key. And then I want to do dot txt because it is a text document that I want to create. And then what I want to do is I want to put all 12 fields inside the dot text document. And I want to separate them. I want to create a very unique delimiter or separator. And I'm going to use the forward slash C forward slash. Okay, so that's what we're going to be using here. So we're using that. So it simply added it. So basically just dragging these inside here, creating that text document. And it is that text document that I want added in here. So that means 
in my application, if I decide to add, let's clear this all, let's clear this information, do one more, right? So we can clear it all out here. And we're going to register one more time. Okay, so we're going to create a registration and then we'll do new registration. And this will do Sally Smith. Okay, so we can create it and then we'll just do Sally at Gmail. So we're going to send those details. And what that's going to do is going to create that text file. And we're going to take a look inside my Dropbox here. And now there it is, it just popped up. We take a look inside this text file. We see that we have all the information, the license number, and then the delimiter, the active, the, the information, her name, again, the delimiter, the email, and all the other information. All 12 columns are located here. Now, all I need to do is use VBA to scan this folder and upload any information, locating this, seeing if it isn't existing here. Of course, here is, if we take a look in here, we have our field one. This is our license. All we need to do is look up to see if we have that license. If it exists in a row, update the row. If it doesn't exist, all we need to do is add a new one. And that is through a macro. So let's take a look inside that macro, and then we're going to get into the rest of that. Okay, so let's take a look inside that macro. And we just registered this, so that's good. And then here's, we'll go back to that start screen. So continuing on with the macro. So there's a macro that's going to do that. So let's continue on with this macro before we finish. So we're sending that up. And then what I want to do is if the registration type is existing, we want to set the expiration date based on the registration details. Okay, so registration. So we're going to get a response back, right? And what I want to know is if in it, so how do we get that response back? Well, let's take a look. There's no response back on this scenario. We don't need a response back because it's a new, new. We've already set the expiration date, right? We've already set it because it's brand new. We've set it to 30 days. But what if it's an existing? If it's an existing, I want to do something else. We're going to update a record. So here's existing. Again, if it's an existing, the first thing we're going to do is field. I'm going to simply click the field key here. We're going to update the existing and we're going to insert a missing records. And again, I want to simply add the license key here. We can add the license key here. That's fine. It's already added though because it's existing. So I kind of left that blank. And then we want to add the status, the application, all basically everything that we have done here. And then what I want to do is I want to get the record, right? Here, this is really important. I want to extract what I want to extract. I want to extract the license information, right? Because I need to get that. I need to know when the expiration date. So what I want to do is I want to get a record based on this field one, right? I want to extract that particular license and I'll show you how that's going to work in a moment. Then what I want to do, so we're going to get that license information. Then what I want to do is I want to send some information to Dropbox. Again, just as we did before, there's no difference between this file. Sending all that information to Dropbox. And then what I want to do is I want to get that licensing information. When's it? And I'll show you exactly how that's going to work. And I want to put that inside the response. How, how do we do that? Well, let me show you an example of that. Okay, so let's say let's say she bought this, right? So we're going to clear out the license key, and then we're going to clear out everything else. And now Sally decided she was going to buy it. So we're going to I'm going to add in here, and then I'm going to just refresh the data. It's going to bring Sally's information back into here. Here's Sally Smith right here. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure that we decide, okay, Sally decided she's going to buy it. So we're going to give her a non, let's give her a one year expiring. Okay. So we're going to give her one year and then we're going to say, okay, so now she's one year. So I'm going to save that license here. And we decided that, that she's going to, so we're going to give Sally this license number, say, thank you for your purchase. And you've decided. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this license number. And now Sally, we're going to email Sally this license number. And Sally, we want to give her one year. So we're going to say, okay, register license key existing, existing a license. She's going to put in her name here. So we've given her, we've emailed her this license key, and we now it's one year. So let's put in Sally at Gmail. Okay, so now we've emailed this. So now we want to make sure that this registration. So what I want to do is I want to get take this license i want to look up based on this license i want to look up all the information let's refresh the data make sure we saved it making sure making sure i saved it because that's very important i want to make sure that that new uh expired on date got saved very important let's take a look inside our data making sure okay we see here let's bring this down a little bit and bring it back up okay i see here that sally has been all right may here it is may 26 may 6 the 2023 sally's already been updated in the database so that's good so now what i want to do is i want to make sure that that date comes into here based on this so when i send those details it's going to look up that 
that registration. It's going to pull it out. Your application has been successfully registered until May 6, 2023. So that's it. Oops, it was so quick. But you got the point, right? Let's go back to the start. We can look at that. So now we've looked up this expiration date and brought it into here. Okay, so all the information. So how did that happen? So it happened through, of course, through this, right? It's this scenario right here. We now let's go down here. So it is an existing registration. We've sent the information here, her name. We've gotten a record, and we're going to bring that information back into the response. So inside that response, I want the license type. I want the frequency quantity. I want the um, expired frequency. I want the expires from, and I want the date in a certain format. And I want to bring all that into the response. And that response is going to come back into here. Where is that coming from? It's coming right into this variable right here. Then we know, first of all, if it's registration types existing, then I want to set the expiration date based on the registration details, right? So the expiration date is based on these information, this information that came in that text file inside that response. What does it look like? Well, let's take a look. Let's do that one more time. I'm going to pause the code here and see what it looks like inside the response. So all we have to do is good to walk you through this again. I'm going to do this once more. Just going to use just going to use the same information here because it's already been registered, and I'm just going to clear it out as if she never registered here. Yeah. Okay. Good. So we have that, and I'm going to clear that out. Okay. So now we're going to register the application. I'm going to paste in that same key, paste in that same name, right? And just giving it a Gmail, making sure that's required. Okay. So now we're going to send the details. It's going to pause the code as soon as we get to that point, and we're going to be able to see what that response looks like. Okay. Here's the code. So we take take a look. We see the response. Right, it's all, it has all the information. We see that her expiration date here is five six two two three. So it's all, and it's of course delimited based on that back that forward slash c forward slash. So we have our delimiter. So what I want to do now is I want to take that response and I'm going to split it based on that delimiter, and then put each one of those variables in, values inside the cells. So to do that. We're going to set, let's go ahead and tab through here as we move it. So we're going to set then our expense data based on a split. We want to split that entire response based on our delimiter here. And then so what I want to do is I want to then loop through each one of these. Let's go through here. I want to loop through each one of these from 14 through 18. And I want to add the information based on here. So it's based on this array here, expense data. Now, our arrays, of course, they start out with zero, right? So zero, one, two, three. So I need, I know our field row starts off in 14, right? From 14 to 18. So if I do 14 minus 14, it's going to get zero. So that's going to be our first value in our array. So as we loop through this, it's going to place that one. Looping through this, frequency quant one, frequency years. So as we loop this, it's going to split all the information and place that data directly in here. Great. So that's so you can see as I tap through that. Now, if the range be 18, right, if our expiration date is less than the current date, let the user know that the registration has expired, right? Make sure that the, and we're going to exit the sub. However, if B18 equals empty, let the user know that, they, you know, that means there's no expiration date. We want to let the user know that they've, the application has been registered for the entire life, moving down. However, else your application has been successfully registered until, we want to give it a format, B18, giving it that month, month, DD, YY. So then as we tab through this, we want to let the user know your application has been successfully registered until May 6, 2023. That's it. That's all we need to do to bring it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to run a macro called workbook open. All right, great. So let's continue on. So now we see how we, now we just open the macro, go for that macro in just a moment. Okay, great. So that happens all throughout this inside that scenario right here. So that's what happens. So we see how if it is a new, we all we need to do is simply update that. And then if it's an existing, we need to bring the licensing information back into that response so that we can then register that application. And of course, it goes to Dropbox where we can update this. These are the same, right? Where we update our application. So those are those are the only two scenarios that we need to think about. So now we see that this open, but how do we secure this application? Well, we want to make sure that the user doesn't have access, right? If I save it and close this workbook, I want to make sure that the user does not have access to this until the registration, until we know. So for example, right, what would happen if 
we've deleted when we give them this workbook right if i decide to close it and i want to clear out all that right and then remember these fields are hidden and locked so they wouldn't see it i'm going to save it and i'm going to close this application now when i do that i want to make sure that they don't have access to that when they open it so when i open that workbook i want to make sure they have access to nothing but that start screen remember these columns are hidden please make sure to register your application notice here i'm bringing it up a little bit Notice that there is only one single sheet available. There's nothing they can do. These columns are hidden. There's nothing they can do here except making sure that macros are enabled and registering the application. They can't do anything else because no sheets are available. And now they can click new and get and try a demo version only if none has been created or they have a license key and they can do both. So we want to make sure that on the workbook close, when the workbook is closed, that every single sheet other than the start sheet is automatically hidden and very well hidden so that they can't unhide the sheets right if i try to unhide the sheets it won't work either because they're very hidden okay so how do we do that well that's an event called on close right so when i create let's go ahead and go into this workbook this workbook here this workbook i want to create two macros one before the workbook closes i want to run a macro and then one when the when the workbook opens so the one that we're going to close of course both of those are already located inside our user registration and we have one that's called secure and close workbook first thing you want to do is activate the start sheet it's there's a lot of errors that i see when you try to hide the start street you try to hide the start screen but you're not on it or you try to hide another screen but you're already on it it's going to create an error so the first thing we want to do is always activate the sheet that we're not going to hide the second is I want to hide every single sheet in the workbook other than the one that's called start. So we've already dimensioned a worksheet as a worksheet. So the, for each worksheet in this workbook worksheet, so for every single one, I want to give it a name. If it doesn't equal start, if the worksheet name does not equal start, then worksheet visible equals very hidden. I want to make sure that it is hidden. Very important. And we're going to loop through everything. And then what we're going to do is save this workbook. All that's going to happen before it closes. That way, when they open the workbook, only one sheet is visible. So we can do this. So when they open the workbook, this macro is going to run. Remember, this workbook, this macro is going to run. Workbook open. Okay, I'll probably comment these out. Um, you know, you can put these in yourself, but make sure we don't want, I don't want macros running when you open it. But I don't think you're going to need this warehouse manager because everything you need is in this workbook here. Remember, all these workbooks are here. Use registration inside the limited access. It's here. Close workbook, open workbook. Everything's here, okay? So I'm just demonstrating how that works. Okay, so inside this one, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to check with the start screen. I want to know, does B19, I want to, first of all, I want to add the number of opens. Now, we can create additional um, scenarios that automatically send information to uh are to, to know how many workbooks how many times they open but i just decided we're going to increment that one and let us know how many op opens they have so if we can send that information at some point in the future now i want to make sure that they have a proper registration date if b14 equals 2 this would be of course that there is there's no expiration date or b18 the value the expiration date is greater than or equal to the current date then what we could do is we could say yes we want to open the worksheet then we're going to open all the worksheets here so now keep in mind if you still want to have worksheets hidden in your workbook you need to add an asset if sheet does not equal right so that means this is going to open every single sheet in your workbook you when you release workbooks you may want to have some sheets always hidden in that case you need to write if then statement to make sure that only some sheets open and other sheets don't okay keep that in mind so this is to say as long as the worksheet name doesn't equal start then the worksheet visible equals visible so this is going to make it visible then what we're going to do is we're going to you can decide whatever screen you want to activate i don't want the start screen so i've decided we have a screen in this application we have a screen called home i want to activate that else this would be expired please make sure to re expire or register okay or register okay that means there's no expiration date and or b14 doesn't equal to let the user know to register and we're going to exit the sub we're not opening any worksheets unless the registration is complete okay that's it so that's all we need to do to secure and close the workbook and secure and open you want to make sure that these macros are running on open event okay very good now when we show we've already been over this one we've already been over this one so that is it for all of the macros so user license set expired date now when we want to set an expired date this one we've done when we want to make sure that we set a specific expired date this is no different than the macro we already went over of course this is based on the variables inside our start screen so it's based on these variables right here 
that we set. So here we can automatically create an expiration date based on that. So if we decide we're going to use this, we can also automatically set BAT and expiry date based on variables that we set inside here, based on, remember, one year, one month, or whatever we want. So that's the same macro, but we've also put it in here. All right, very cool. All right, let's take a look at what we've gone over. We showed you how to create this incredible application with limited access workbooks to create licenses for your users, unlimited users and licenses, right? And automatically how to upload that on a remote database using scenarios using make. So we've created two scenarios, one to simply create a webhook to update or add to that database, and the other one from a user point of view so that we're going to either uh, create an automated registration for new registrations, or we're going to create one for existing registrations where we're going to extract the expiration date and bring that into response and also send any updates to Dropbox. It is then from those text files in Dropbox through a macro that we're going to be able to update our own database through that. So what an incredible training. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope you do, of course, like these trainings. Don't forget to comment below. I respond to each and every comment. And of course, I'll bring you a brand new one each and every week. I do appreciate your support. I've got some incredible courses. If you like this licensing but want to go way beyond this licensing, including version control, including tons and tons more, I've got that embedded inside my mentorship course. So that would be a great way. In my mentorship course, I show you how to define, design, develop, and deploy your own Excel applications for passive income. So we've got a lot of graduates from there who are already earning tons of money and making their own applications. So I hope you'll join us inside the mentorship course. I'll include the links down below. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next week.